Hi everyone! This is going to be a new series on this channel. It is going to be videos where I discuss skincare. If some of you don't know, I started out um, running Allura Beauty as a beauty website and then I eventually added the YouTube channel to supplement that website and now they're pretty even. I spend pretty equal time on both the website and the YouTube channel making videos. The reason I tell you that is when I originally conceived of my beauty website, I was actually more focused on skincare and sort of trying to debunk sort of ridiculous <laughs> beauty claims that pervade the beauty industry still and probably always will because we don't regulate the beauty industry that well, at least in the United States, in terms of these outlandish claims that they make about how they're going to make us younger or make us look more drastically beautiful. So anyway, I tell you that uh, by way of sort of introduction for this series because I feel like with my website and YouTube channel, I have almost exclusively, well, definitely for the YouTube channel, but the website too has moved away a lot from talking about skincare and bringing truth to beauty industry claims. And I kind of want to get back to those roots and do more videos and features on the website that talk about real skincare ingredients that actually do positive things for your skin instead of having people think that all these claims that you hear in advertisements are somehow true and most of the time they are not. And I feel like also in the YouTube community there is just so little real knowledge about ingredients that are good for your skin and ingredients that are very bad for your skin but that people don't know about or they just are under the impression that they do something beneficial for the skin. So anyway, this is going to be the first installment in the skincare series. I'm going to focus on dry skin and I'm going to share with you the things to look for in products to help dry skin and share some products with you that I have tried personally and that I know are beneficial for keeping dry skin moisturized and healthy. I may also do a makeup counterpart to this if you're interested in makeup that's good for dry skin. If you're interested in that, please leave a comment below. If there's enough interest, I will go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I will concentrate on skincare. And of course, I will be doing other skincare videos for oily skin, combination skin, and a whole host of other skincare issues. And if you have skincare questions, I would love to hear them. Maybe I can sort of gather them and see what it is people are most interested in learning about. All right, so let's get on to skincare products that are best for dry skin. So I wanna start out by sharing some quote unquote rules that you should follow no matter what kind of product you're buying, whether it be a moisturizer or a cleanser. Um, the number one thing, especially for dry skin, for all skin types, but particularly for dry skin because it is much more prone to getting cracks in it or just having um, irritants affect your skin, the number one thing is to avoid certain irritating ingredients. And again, this is true no matter what kind of skin you have, but I want to emphasize them even more for dry skin. One is alcohol. Now there's a debate in terms of whether alcohol is actually damaging to your skin. And I've read several scientific articles, some saying that it doesn't have any sort of sort of free radical type damage on the skin, and some saying that it does. So I think the jury in terms of the raw science is probably still out on that issue. But alcohol is a drying agent. It's very drying on the skin. So regardless of whether it's causing cell damage to the skin, which like I mentioned before is kind of up in the air still, it is going to suck the moisture out, the little moisture that you have on your skin out of the skin. So avoid any type of product that has alcohol in it. Another thing that I wanna mention is that it's a little confusing to know the difference between some alcohols that are okay for the skin and some 
alcohols that are not okay for the skin. So the number, the top two ingredients that you want to check the label for and make sure you avoid is if it just says alcohol, then you want to avoid that. If it says SD alcohol, you want to avoid that. If it says something like SD alcohol 40, you want to avoid that. There are other types of alcohol usually found at the end of the ingredients list that are not actually drying agents. But if you see any of the three that I just mentioned, put it back on the shelf and avoid that product. Other ingredients that are irritating, fragrance. Now this is not just synthetic fragrance that irritates the skin. That's a very big misconception. People think, oh, well, it's a natural fragrance. It comes from plant oil or whatnot. That doesn't keep it from being an, a skin irritant. All fragrances that are included in a product are irritating for the skin and they don't do anything for your skin. Fragrance is not skincare. Fragrance is just something that companies add into the product because they're appealing to people's sense of smell. It doesn't have any skincare impact on your skin. So it is irritating for it. It doesn't do anything beneficial. So you should avoid any sort of fragrance, even if it's from essential oil. That is definitely irritating to the skin, so avoid those. And then of course, any synthetic fragrances that are added, you should avoid that too. And then things like lemon peel oil or orange peel oil, those are also irritants to the skin and they can be especially damaging to the skin if you're exposed to sunlight and you have those ingredients on the skin. So just try to avoid those ingredients. And also keep in mind that just because something says that it's good for sensitive skin or dry skin, doesn't necessarily mean that it is. You cannot, in the makeup and the skincare industry, you cannot take any label at face value because companies have a huge incentive to cater to certain people and to say that their products do certain things when they really don't. So you kind of have to know what the reality is behind the label when you're going shopping, unfortunately, and not pay that much attention to what the product claims that it does and figure out what it actually does by reading the ingredients and understanding what is good and what is not good for your skin. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about specific products and I'm gonna go sort of in sequential order of how you would conduct your skincare routine. So the first part will be cleaning the skin. So what cleansers are the best for the skin? And in some sense, this is sort of a strange answer because honestly, for people who have dry skin, one of the best solutions is to not wash your skin as often as you would if you had normal or oily skin. And I feel like it's important to share this because personally, in particular, when I heard this, and for a very long time, I was totally not a believer in this. I thought, that's gross, you need to clean your skin regularly at least two times a day when you get up and when, before you go to bed, and you just wouldn't wanna be not cleaning your skin. What I found in actuality when I went through a period of time where I had very, very dry skin is that it's not really true. I would say you definitely need to wash your skin at the end of the day, especially if you have makeup on and you need to remove that before you go to bed, absolutely. But in the morning, actually you don't need to wash your skin with a cleanser if you have dry skin and you can splash some water on your face just to sort of refresh it and help you wake up. But you don't need to be stripping the oils, the you know, low level of oils that you have developed on the skin while sleeping at night. And you hopefully are not being exposed to a lot of dirt while you're sleeping on, you know, from hopefully your pillows and your sheets and things are clean. So barring any sort of accumulation of dirt from being outside or any sort of makeup, of course you shouldn't have makeup while you're sleeping, then there isn't actually a huge compelling reason to have to clean the skin in the morning. So my suggestion is if you do have dry skin, try for a little while just not cleaning the skin in the morning and cleaning the skin only at night. It may take a little while to get used to, but it actually will help the uh, skin on your face retain the oils that the skin naturally produces instead of stripping them twice a day or more than twice a day. 
if you just can't get on board with that and you do need a cleanser, which I totally understand in the morning, use a cleanser that is more cream based and that doesn't foam up a lot. That foaming action isn't always a bad thing for skin, but it does do a pretty effective job of stripping the skin of the oils, which is good for people with oily skin, but not good for people with dry skin. Okay, so two practical examples or real examples of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about gentle, um, non-stripping cleansers that you can use. The first one, widely available, easy to access, is by Cetaphil, and this is the Gentle Skin Cleanser. The ingredients on this are actually quite few. They're pretty straightforward. If you're someone who's used to a lot of lather, these get used to, they take time to get used to using because they don't lather. This is just a thin, slightly gel slash cream formula, and it is going to very gently cleanse the skin. The second one, one of my all-time favorites for gently cleaning the skin, it is by VMV Hypoallergenics. It's the Red Better Deeply Soothing Cleansing Cream. Again, is not a lathering product, just very gently removes any sort of surface um, oils that you have on the skin. So the other thing to remember is that these are best suited for the daytime when you've just gotten up and you're not looking to remove any sort of heavy makeup. Unfortunately, it's hard to have a cleanser that both effectively removes makeup and doesn't dry out your skin because the process of removing something that's on the surface of the skin will also simultaneously remove the natural oils that are on your skin. So these are great for daytime solutions. And if you're just someone who doesn't really wear makeup or wears very light powder makeup, then sure, these will also work for you in the nighttime before you're going to bed. But for the nighttime, what I would suggest is to actually use a um, wash cloth in the shower or to use a cleansing wipe and then to, to remove you know eye makeup and mascara and then to go over with these products to cleanse the rest of the face or you may just have to use an effective cleanser and then resort to moisturizing the face because of the oils that have been stripped from the skin. Next step for those who use toners would be a toner after cleansing the skin and the again number one thing is to avoid toners that have alcohol. I would say 95 plus percent of toners that you can buy on the market have alcohol in them and they have alcohol in them because they are marketed as getting rid of the oil on your skin being an astringent and those really strip the oils and the natural moisture that your skin has and that's very unfortunate but if you can somehow find a toner that doesn't have alcohol in it that is key for dry skin the drugstore is particularly notorious for this it is almost impossible to find a good toner especially good toner for dry skin at the drugstore because they all contain alcohol and other ingredients that are irritating and more drying to the skin. The two solutions that I have are unfortunately not really accessible in a drugstore. You have to buy them online. Actually, now that I think about it, there is one from Boots number seven and it's in their sensitive skincare line. It comes in those sort of white or clear um, bottles. They look very, they're very simply designed. So I think they do have one that it doesn't have alcohol in it. You can get those at Target. The other two that I'm going to show you as practical examples. One is from Michael Todd. And this is the Cranberry Anti-Ox Toner. This not only has a good amount of antioxidants in it, but it's also hydrating and it doesn't include alcohol that strips the skin. Now, just as a warning, not all Michael Todd toners are good. Some of them do have other irritating ingredients, so if you're gonna buy a Michael Todd toner, I would stick with this one. The second toner is from a company, a company that's always a safe choice, and that's Paula's Choice. And this is just an example of one of her toners. It's the Moisture Boost Toner, so it's particularly good for dry skin. This also has good antioxidants in it, and it doesn't have any irritating ingredients for the skin. Okay, on to moisturizers. Again, something that's fragrance-free and alcohol-free. And people with dry skin are fortunate in the sense that they can get away with using formulas that are quite heavy and probably want something that is more heavy. So again, stick to things that have a cream formula to them because those will be more hydrating as opposed to things that are of a gel 
um, consistency or a more liquid consistency, which tend to not be as hydrating long term. So some practical examples. These are two products there by the company Exoderm, which sort of markets their products for people who have dermatitis or who have other skincare problems like eczema. So they are fragrance free and irritant free. So the first one is, it's actually technically in the baby skincare line, but it can be used on all types of skin types. It doesn't have to be exclusively used for babies. This is the Intensive Baby Moisturizer, and this is the Flare Control Cream. These are both pretty straightforward items. They just have ingredients that are emollients or hydrating for the skin. The Flare Control Cream is actually a little unique because it also has hydrocortisone in it, which will help to soothe the skin if you have something that's being particularly irritating for your dry skin. Another fantastic moisturizer, probably the most moisturizing face cream that I have found, is by the company DCL. This is their Quick Recovery Post-Treatment Cream. And this is particularly moisturizing, I think, because it has a good amount of shea butter in it. That's why it brings so much plumpness and, and moisture back to the skin. And despite the fact that it has shea, shea butter in it, it is actually pretty lightweight and thin. It doesn't leave a greasy or oily texture on the skin. So that's why I really enjoyed using this product when I had severely dry skin. The problem is that this company, well, you can buy this at Derm Store, but again, it's a product that is hard to get in person. You have to go online in order to purchase this. And again, like I said, for any safe bet, you can turn to Paula's Choice. This is her Skin Recovery Hydrating Treatment Mask. So on the directions for this, it actually says to use this the way you would use a mask, which is to put it all over the skin, sort of let it sink in for 10 minutes and then remove it. But when I had such severe dry skin, I used this as a straightforward moisturizer and it worked perfectly fine. It wasn't a filming agent. It's not one of those masks that like dries up into making your skin look like the floor of a desert and with cracks and things like that. It worked perfectly fine as a very hydrating moisturizer. So if you have just normally dry skin and you want a mask to use once in a while to help bring moisture to it, then sure, you can use this as a mask. If you have consistently very dry skin, go ahead and you can definitely use this as a moisturizer. It performs perfectly well. There are people with dry and oily skin, so that is sort of a unique combination, but I feel like most people with dry skin do not have oily skin um, simultaneously, and so therefore that means people with dry skin are also fortunate in the sense that they get to get away with using a lot of heavier formulas for sunscreen. So sunscreen would be your next step after your moisturizer. And again, just find something that doesn't have a fragrance in it and has more of a cream formula as opposed to a thin liquid formula. I don't think I have to make a lot of suggestions because like I said, I think you can use pretty much any formula sunscreen when you have dry skin, as long as you don't have both dry and oily skin together. But two suggestions. The first is by Avon's A New Clinical Line. This is the Skin Vincible Sunscreen. It has an SPF of 50. And again, this has a pretty moisturizing formula without being oily on the skin. The other benefit to this is that it does have retinol in it, so that is an added skincare boost to this product. And by Paula's Choice, I am not sponsored by Paula's Choice. I am not asked to do these reviews. I just own a ton of Paula's Choice products because I know that they're reliable and won't irritate the skin. This is the Ultimate Anti-Aging Hand Cream. It has an SPF of 30. It is very lightweight on the skin. It is wonderful to use and wear because typically I have oily skin. And so if I have dry skin, I would also definitely use this, but I can also use it when I have oily or combination skin because it doesn't emphasize any sort of oiliness or shininess. But I have to mention that she has remarketed this um, hand cream. It's originally made as a hand cream, but they don't sell this anymore. They have converted it into a face cream and increased the price on it, which is very annoying. But you will now find this in the skin, in the uh, moisturizer for the face category as opposed to a hand cream. Okay, the next thing that is good for dry skin, especially for your nighttime routine, are oils and serums. So you can get something like argan oil and apply that to the face after your moisturizer for bedtime. 
you also something very easily that is accessible to anyone is you can go to even your grocery store and buy a bottle of vitamin E oil and I took mine and I put it in this pump bottle here but you can find bottles of them at your local drugstore or even at the grocery store and you can use that as a part of your nighttime routine to apply onto the face it not only is bringing vitamins and antioxidants to the face but it's also helping to lock in the moisturizer that you've already applied underneath and serums, of course, they are sort of an oily type of consistency. Again, from Paula's Choice, this serum is particularly good for dry skin. It's the Skin Recovery Super Antioxidant Concentrate Serum. So it is a serum that will help lock in moisture again, but also bring you skin beneficial ingredients like antioxidants. I also want to cover the issue of having dry skin and also trying to fight acne if you have both of those issues at the same time. This is really a tough situation to be in for people because at the drugstore and even high-end skincare, those companies are very bad at providing you effective anti-acne products that don't irritate and dry out the skin which is amazing because people who have acne issues have particularly inflamed or irritated skin and companies just do a bad job of giving you products that are good at not further irritating your skin and effectively fighting acne issues. So I'm going to show you two products that are good for people who have dry skin and also need to address acne issues. And yes, they are again by Paula's Choice. It's just unfortunately one of the very few companies that doesn't include irritating ingredients but also includes very effective ingredients in the skincare. So one um, ingredient that you always find in over-the-counter anti-acne products is salicylic acid. So the maximum strength you can get for use for anti-acne purposes is 2%. So this is from Paula Choice's Clear Line, which is her anti-acne line, and this is the salicylic acid solution. So this is at a pH level that is effective, and it also doesn't include alcohol, something that is almost always included in, you know, anti-acne toners, especially from brands that are known to do those products like Neutrogena. Just avoid those. They're almost 99.9% .9 not good for your skin. So unfortunately you have to purchase these online again, like I mentioned before, but it is definitely a far superior choice for your anti-acne and dry skin issues. And then the second ingredient you always see over the counter is benzyl peroxide, and the strongest strength you can get for that is 10%. So again, from the clear line, this is the daily skin clearing treatment. It has 5% benzyl peroxide. And once again, unlike most other benzoyl peroxide drying formulas, this one does not dry out the skin. It has a very thin cream, not even cream, but not a liquid either, but just a very thin formula that smooths over the skin very quickly and does not dry out the skin like almost every other benzoyl peroxide uh, product does on the market. Okay, we're almost done. I wanna mention two more products that don't really fall in any sort of category. These are products that are used if you have severely dry skin. The first one is glycerin, and this is just straightforward. 90, is it 99% glycerin or 100% glycerin? 99.5% glycerin. And you can buy this at Walmart. Um, you may be able to buy it at a grocery store, but certainly drug stores or stores like Walmart, you can find these. They're usually not in the skincare line. They are more in like the first aid sort of section of the store, but it's just a clear liquid. And glycerin is something that you find in a bunch of skincare products because it moisturizes the skin or it's technically a humectant. So it brings moisture to the surface of the skin. So a lot of the time when I had severely dry skin, I would just literally put glycerin on my skin or I would mix a few drops of this into whatever other moisturizer that I was using in order to help bring more moisture to the surface of the skin. This is very cheap, I think it's only a few dollars, and it is a very effective agent for helping the people with dry skin sort of solve that problem temporarily. And you'll notice that in a lot of skincare, especially skincare that is good for dry skin, that glycerin is one of the first ingredients that you see on the label. 
So for example, take this exoderm cream that I showed you earlier. If you look on the ingredients list, glycerin is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth ingredient on this label here. On this VMV hypoallergenics cleansing cream that I showed you earlier, glycerin is the third ingredient labeled. And on this hydrating treatment mask that I showed you, glycerin is the fourth ingredient labeled. So it's already an ingredient that is beneficial for dry skin and so therefore is included in a lot of face moisturizers. So you can go out yourself and get the ingredient glycerin and use it on your skin in a higher dosage in order to combat very dry skin. And the last item I'm going to talk about, people are going to think I am crazy and it sounds a little crazy, but especially if you have, this is a, a item that is more for the lips, not, not really for the whole face. It is called Bag Balm. It is something you can find in the drugstore aisle. It's usually on one of the bottom shelves. And it is something that farmers apparently used to use on the udder of cows because that area of the cow gets very dry from milking the cow. And so they would need something extremely sort of a, a sealant for that area because the udders, this is so weird, but udders will get very cracked and dry. So that is why it's called Bag Balm. It comes in this very distinct, noticeable green um, tin or metal square jar here. And this is what it looks like. You will, in your entire lifetime, not get through one of these jars. If, you, if there's a smaller version, you should definitely pick that one up. But this is basically petroleum um, mixed with a couple of other ingredients. So it feels very slick, kind of like Vaseline does, but it's a little more effective than Vaseline. And it, if you suffer from severely cracked dry lips that just cannot be addressed by regular lip balms, then this is definitely something that you can try. It is quite thick in quality. It's very shiny on the surface. So unless you use a very thin layer of it, it's hard to use for the daytime, but certainly during the nighttime, this is something that you can use. And again, it's quite thick. So using it on the face is probably not that doable, but oftentimes I would put on my lips and then put the remainder on my um, hands or it's nice for the elbows and the knees or the feet things like that. And to be fair, this glycerin is also great for the lips just to put a surface layer on the lips. Very usable for the daytime. It totally disappears and sinks into the lips. So this is a good alternative for temporary relief for very cracked dry lips. Okay, so there's the first skincare video for skincare particular to dry skin that's best for dry skin. I know this video is probably a lot long for some of you. The subsequent videos will be shorter because I won't be introducing the series as thoroughly in those videos. But I do really hope that this was helpful to you. There are lots of tips in this video that are good for all skin types no matter what. For example, avoiding fragrances. But especially for people suffering from dry skin, I really hope that this gives you a helpful insight into how to avoid the bad products on the market that are uh, saturating the market out there and to focus in on and be able to identify the skincare items that are actually good for your dry skin. Okay, please share your thoughts with me in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about the series and what you'd like to know and any suggestions or any sort of thoughts or comments that you have. I really hope that this was helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.